Hi everyone, Lewis here, and today I'm going to bring you guys another overview of an H1Z1 stream. This time it was one on the 29th of May, and it's actually been a really long time since I've shown a bunch of gameplay for it, so it's cool to see how it's progressed, and it has indeed progressed a shit ton. Of course, the game was due to come out like two weeks ago now. Still not really sure about the release date, I'll talk about that a bit more at the end, but still, let's get into it and show you guys what's new. The first thing you'll probably notice is the chat, the inventory, and also the UI as a whole. We've got icons now for health, for your stamina, for your food and your drink, and also slots for free weapons, and a head, back, chest, and also legs piece for any cosmetics which you want to put on your character. That means there's now a lot more loot to find around the world. One thing which I'd say Daisy's really strong with is because there's just so many items in the game, you're always finding something new. Whereas in this, at least a few weeks ago, there wasn't too many weapons and there was no cosmetics full stop except backpacks. Although there can, of course, be used for storage as well. But now that those have been added, you will find pants, shirts and a bunch of other stuff around the world. And also, although it's old news, you will be able to, of course, search all of the objects in the world like desks, wardrobes, that kind of stuff. So pretty much everything is searchable. The next thing we're shown was the crafting menu, which the way it works in this, it's not quite the same way as it works in Rust, but essentially you've got a discovery tab, which for just about a click on, and that is how you find the recipes for all the different things you can craft. So of course, if you've played the game before, or you've played it for a long time, you'll eventually know the recipes for everything which is important, or you could just Google them, but until you actually go on the discovery tab and put the things in which you can discover stuff with, then you won't actually know how to make it. So in this case, the guys who are streaming it put in the two items which are blue and then with those they discover that they are able to make an item which is essentially just a flat land piece which you can put down which you can then put bases on top of which is probably one of the coolest things they've shown here. That item's called the ground tamper and also you'll notice instead of having the possibility of putting anything in the discovery menu you can only have a few things inside it so it should be kind of easy to discover stuff. Obviously this was set up by the devs, so who knows how many items you can find which you can discover different stuff with. But still, it's a pretty cool system and you'll also see with the inventory, they've changed it now so it's kind of more like DayZ. Instead of having it so you've just got like 20 slots and that's that, all of your different items will be able to have things inside them. So finding these different cosmetics will also affect how much inventory space you can actually have. So on the topic of base building, what can you actually do for base building? Well, it's surprisingly flexible and it's something which I don't think you'll ever see in DayZ. The game, I'd say right now, is more like Rust than it is DayZ, although it is still just a really good combination of both. But essentially, you use the ground tamper to put down this little foundation. And then on top of that, you're able to attach a bunch of objects on it. So some of them will actually clip to the edges, so for example the walls which they've spawned in right here. Of course, it will take a long time to get these. It's not like everyone's going to have a base. It's going to take a long time to craft something like this. Again, it's just a demonstration. But with the walls, they will clip to the sides. And with some objects, like we'll show later, the furnace, that doesn't attach to anything. So you're able to put that anywhere. But essentially with the foundation, which you can, you know, have more than one foundation if you want, although it will be very expensive, you can just put your base on top of it and have any of the objects you want to keep safe on the inside. The base is still a work in progress here, but they put down a door so you will be able to actually keep stuff safe because it is a player ownership kind of thing. So if you place down that door, then you will own it. I guess in the future it could be changed, so you might need to put a lock on it or something like that. But right now, it's just whoever places down the door is able to open it up. Right now, we're just placing down a few more of objects, which you can see are clipping to the floor itself. And also that thing in the corner we just placed is for water. So say, for example, it's raining, as it is actually right now, the water will go down on the blue plastic sheet and it'll flow down into the box so if you do need a drink then that's a really good way to make sure there's an unlimited supply of water assuming it rains but if it doesn't rain then you know it's not going to be any good but still you've got the option of taking water from there if you do want to do that on top of adding all these items they've also added the option of chopping down trees although that was a thing you could do before it actually falls down now and you can also just see the ui in the bottom left and also on the top it says when you receive items so it's just obvious how it works you just chop down the trees you get the wood and eventually you might be able to put that wood to use in base building or some other form of crafting if you do discover how to do it on top of that you can also now loot the bushes in the world for berries of course, all these small changes aren't mind-blowing, but you can see the game already looks just 10 times more functional than it did a few weeks ago. It was lacking UI then, it didn't really have two good notifications for when you were getting stuff, it didn't have the base building system as it does here, and it just looks more like a game which you could sink a lot of hours into. 
Skipping a bit further ahead, this is the finished product of the base which we made. We've got a furnace up and running right there which you're able to of course smelt stuff with. Again, it is a lot like rust. Also when showing off a furnace, they did show the option of putting weapons inside the furnace which you can then smelt down into metal parts so then you're able to craft them into new weapons or just crafting materials as a whole. So you are able to smelt down a lot of stuff. So the furnace does have a unique take on how it should work of course in the game. And like I mentioned, if you want to put the time and energy into making a massive base, then you can do that. It's going to take a really long time. Also, one thing which we changed, which is pretty cool, is you'll see in the bottom, along with the four normal icons, we've also got the fifth one to the right, which is, of course, fuel. So now you're actually able to run out of fuel, which is a nice little addition, which will make it so, of course, since this is an MMO, which will have a thousand or so people on a server, if not more, there is the possibility of having to trade for fuel or as a whole just, you know, the lack of fuel is an interesting concept which hasn't really been explored in the game before. Maybe it'll happen in Daisy when cars are eventually added, but this game has cars in it and base building, so it's looking pretty good. They also shown off the possibility of tearing up your shirt in the discovery menu, so if you want to tear up the shirts which you find around the world, then you can do that and make them into bandages which you can use just like in DayZ. But that's pretty much it in terms of new stuff. There was a few other small things, but it's just looking like it's making a lot of progress very quickly. It has features from Daisy and Rust and has combined them in an engine which doesn't suck. There is still some things which obviously aren't perfect about the game. It could end up just being a massive KOS fest. And with a thousand people on a server, and the world itself right now isn't the biggest ever, although it can be, of course, extended in the future. Zombies are looking not the best ever, but you can see them in massive hordes around the place. The lighting is really amazing, so... Yeah, as a whole, it's looking pretty good. And the thing which I wanted to talk about earlier, which was release date. So when the hell is it coming out? Because I don't know about you guys, but I'd say right now it looks kind of playable. If you can get a thousand people on a server with no issues, then that's fine. I can deal with that. The only real hint of it is at the end of the stream, Jimmy, the guy on the right, said that on the 6th, they are going to be revealing some exciting news. So I don't know what that means. Exciting news could mean something which has nothing to do with release date, it probably does, but essentially the original goal of four to six weeks, which was about eight weeks ago or something like that, that one's been ditched and who the hell knows when it's coming out now. I think a release date is going to be near, it is going to be on Steam Early Access, it's not going to cost that much money, I think $20, and obviously when the game is eventually out, it's going to be on PS4 more than likely, and it's going to cost uh, $0 when it's out because it's free to play, so... As usual, tell me what you guys think of the project as a whole. I'll leave a link to a full live stream if you want to see it all in the description below. I just thought I'd do some highlights of it and keep you guys up to date with H1Z1 stuff if you're not watching all of the live streams. And I'd also recommend actually following their live stream, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. So that way, you know, when we go live, we go live pretty much every week. And we always have something interesting to show, whether it be behind the scenes developing the game a bit... But of course, in this case, it was a gameplay stream, which I definitely can't complain about. The progress is looking pretty awesome. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and all good stuff. I'll keep you guys up to date if anything crazy happens in the magical world of H1Z1. But right now, it's looking like just a smooth progression up to a very good final product. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.